Meanwhile, Information Minister Kujo Pankroma has received new technologies uh, as received new technologies are being deployed to help with contact tracing of persons who may have come into contact with COVID-19 cases in the country. This follows concerns that the country is not aggressively tracing those who may have the disease in the population. I think, I think the first time we had about um, 1,500 came in from, I think, the WHO, the World Bank support. And then they went up to another 2,000 and then another 5,000. Before our instruction to ramp up testing for the procurement of some uh, 50,000 test kits, um, which instruction uh, was given, and I think by this weekend, stocks of that 50,000 test kits should be coming in, uh, into town. And then now you have uh, what has also come from the Jack Ma Foundation. So then you're going to be hitting maybe somewhere around 70,000 for this third cohort. It is my understanding that it is my understanding that we intend to bring in a lot more test kits because the answer is not even just in the lockdown. It's about test, test, test aggressively. It seems to me, and uh, I'm happy to be corrected, but it seems to me that government is uh, leaning towards the preference of uh, South Korea, test, 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 rather than a lockdown. Is that, is that fair? All cards are on the table, as I've repeated over and over again. Um, the countries that have been successful in flattening the care very quickly, South Korea, I think Japan, and a few of those countries, you can also check the literature from these countries. They have been heavy on test testers. Indeed, for many of them, they didn't even have to do a lockdown. They were more focused on the test testers. For countries that have just had to do a lockdown, but have not had an aggressive testing regime, um, you are not necessarily... Well, many of the lockdowns are not over, but you are not necessarily seeing um, a conclusion that a lockdown on its own without more bears the fruits of what we are looking. It may stop spread, but if you don't find the persons by the time you open up, um, you will now just have delayed the process. So in considering all the options, the view is to examine what do you do when you lock down generally to manage things, but most importantly, what do you do in a lockdown to ensure that you go after the virus and nip it in the bud? Those are the considerations. Right. Now, uh, when you talk about the countries that have been able to turn things around, they made decisions early. South Korea started testing very, very early. Mass testing, drive-through testing, and so forth. The countries that have suffered have made decisions late. Now, if you look at uh, what we've done here in Ghana over the weekend, we stopped two days' worth of uh, you know, travel, if you will, and qu quarantined them, tested them, and we are seeing huge numbers. But we've had this problem for much longer than two days. Are we not grossly underestimating the number of cases that may have come through, even in the few days before the, the, the shutdown of our borders? No, we don't intend to understand it. That is exactly why we have decided to go back to everybody who came in from the third and test. Is I'm that testing decision not coming a bit late, though? Oh, of course not. It's not. I mean, if you, if you, if you raise the questions of South Korea, etc., you have to now start off by asking, for example, when did they record their first case? Where were the peaks in the world at the time? What did they do about travel from the peaks in the world at the time, and when did they start their aggressive testing? And then finally, what was the science they were using for their aggressive testing? Were they using RDTs because they had the genetic formulations for South Koreans that they could use RDTs? Were they using PCI? Were they using PCR? All of that is proper analysis you have to do. And then you juxtapose that with our context. When did we? drop flight from about the 7,000 per day to about a little around 2,000 per day. That was as far back as the uh, 15th, if I'm correct. When did we shut our borders? Because, you know, by, by even dropping down the traffic from about 7,000 to about 2,000, yes, it wasn't zero. But our risk, particularly from the countries which were epicenters at that time, was significantly reduced. When we said we would not... Uh, allow persons from the Chinese jurisdiction to come into um, Ghana as far back as then, when China was the epicenter. Um, we cut back on a lot of potential risk into the Ghanaian jurisdiction. So we don't intend to underestimate 
We are just making sure that the decisions that we make are not emotional or rash decisions. They are well thought through, considered from all the perspectives. I think we're close to a decision point. And um, uh, so far, decisions have served as well. We thank the people of Ghana, the media, and everybody for their support. Um, these final raft of measures um, should be comprehensive so that we nip it in the bud. And that's what the president intends to do. Right. Now, um, let, uh, about the contact tracing, I'm curious about something. We're currently tracing about 900 and something contacts from what you explained. Um, however, we have about 50 something cases that were uh, from the local monitoring and then uh, another 70 is it 72 from 78. the uh, 78 thank you 78 from the, uh, the the mandatory quarantine yeah now as we understand from the who in two weeks one person can infect about 30,000 people yeah. so if for the numbers we have you only have 900 contacts that you are tracing haven't we missed perhaps quite a large number um, if indeed you have missed a large number, it should begin to show up at least in the 900. And that's why these percentages matter, because there are relativities um, involved. Even for the 940 that you have reached, the pattern should begin to show even within this 940. So within the 940, if you have one testing positive, you can extrapolate to this potential 30,000. And begin to have a view of how much risk you have out there. But the contact tracing still continues. Indeed, um, some more technology um, is being rolled or has been rolled into the contact tracing. A bit of it may require some legal powers under the um, emergency powers that have been given the president by parliament. And um, should he activate that, it should help us to maybe go a bit further in the contact a tracing where you can actually begin to geolocate people who, who, who still may even be off, even though they're giving you the data and their phones are off and they are somewhere in the hinterland. You should be able to then, by geolocation, reach them and uh, ask them to come forward for the necessary testing. So we don't intend to underestimate. We are doing everything that ought to be done to ensure that a proper blanket is put around uh, the threat and nips it in the bud.